mutual friend now. I mean, he's uh, Robbie Williams. Would you would you do something with him? To work, I'd love Robbie. The first time I I um I, I got a call years ago, probably two thousand and five, from Catelyn Moran. You know the the writer. She said, uh, "Stay by your phone. Robbie Williams is going to phone." And I thought that's much too stressful. So. <laughs> Turned off my phone and went to dinner and got back and I was an answer phone message from Rob saying he wanted to spend a night in a haunted house with me and <laughs> could I set it up? Because he was a big fan of my first book, Them, which is yes. a book where I, you know, break into Bohemian, sneak into Bohemian Grove with Alex Jones. Yeah. And anyway, so I had some adventures with Rob, went to a UFO convention with him. Uh, during the pandemic, actually, we talked about maybe doing another project together, but that never happened. Mm. But yeah, we. So, but you also have become close to Rob. I, I just, I loved it. Which I should explain actually, because most of this audience is American. I even in England, this is amazing to me. I was um, having dinner, and the waiter was eighteen or nineteen, and um, he asked about my podcast. I don't know how. I mean, I'm, I must have told him about it, right? But I, I like to think people just come up and ask me things. But yeah. I must have you brought look it up. like a podcaster <laughs> someone I've, I, I don't get recognised really but I have had uh, one person came up I, I don't go out much either one person said are you that YouTuber and that was it and I thought do I like being called a YouTuber I thought I was a journalist <laughs> and a writer and an, I thought I was yeah. these you know these grand aspirations you have as a, and, I, I get, and I went yeah and, she did, and I went um, on the edge with Andrew Gold that's it and she went ah <laughs> And that was it. And I was like, oh, because <laughs> if she at least pretended she liked the channel, she could have said, oh, I love your channel. And I was like, oh, thank you. You can't yeah. say anything to... No. Just... And then I left and that was it. And I never went out again. Um, ever, Yeah, ever. she shouldn't have brought it up. You need a follow-up. <laughs> you absolutely need a follow-up. We had a follow-up because I did a, I did a community post on YouTube about it and she saw it and she found my email address and emailed me and said that she, I think she said she was a bit shy or something like that. You see, you never, exactly. That, that's a lot of times in my life when I thought that person was rude. Shy. They're just shy. Yeah, that's it. So, Rob, what was I going to say about him? Because, yeah, I got to go and hang out with him in, in Barcelona and do a quiz with him. And I was really excited because I got one of the quiz answers right. And he takes the quizzes very seriously. Right. I think the whole thing... It's, no, it's, it's not fun if it's not taken seriously. So for Americans, Robbie is Robbie is like one of the biggest names, but he's not known in America, but he's like Madonna level, would you say? Oh, John? yeah. Well, there were certainly times, like in, around sort of 2000, undoubtedly, he was he was as famous everywhere in the world except for in America as, yeah, anyone, Madonna, Beyonce, yeah. like anyone. Like just... The biggest selling non-Latino artist in South America. Right. Yeah, he, um, you know, the first time I visited his house, he lives in a different house now, the, the rooms were quite small. I thought, wow, for, you know, for a fancy, for a very rich pop star, it's quite a modest, I mean, it was a mansion, but <laughs> quite a modest mansion with quite small rooms. And at the time, he was doing the biggest stadium tour I think that had ever been done. We went to see him in Paris. And it was like incredible. And I think it was, yeah, the long, biggest stadium tour in history. I mean, maybe Taylor Swift and Beyonce have like over, overtaken it now, but at the time. And uh, I was wondering whether there was a connection. Like, if you spend your life on stage in stadiums, <laughs> what you desperately want is small, is small rooms because it must yeah. be like you know the agoraphobia. I mean, my God, mm. like the stress and the 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 intensity of being in front of fifty thousand people. Yeah. So I've yeah. always I've never asked him, but I've always wondered whether I heard him on another podcast. So before I ha he came on this podcast, you know, just to see what he was like in an interview, and he was talking about it must have been another house where he said it's a weird thing because you wake up and you see like forty cars in the driveway and like none of them are from your family they're all like people who work for him in the house yeah. goes downstairs for the in the kitchen there's 10 people but only like one person's from his family and how isolating and weird that is that sort of celebrity thing yeah he did a weird thing to me um before his concert so he was just we'd been backstage and in, in his changing room and all that stuff and then there's a bit just before he goes out to the stage um he has um a group huddle like at first they dance and he sings songs and he puts them on Instagram sometimes he'll do like S Club 7 and 5 and all those pop songs English pop bands um, and uh, then we all get in a huddle and I've got my arm I'm right here with him and he starts doing a speech and he goes we've got you know someone's very very special is going to give a speech now to get everyone going for the and it's it's Andrew Gold and well, I you was, had to incentivize I, everyone yeah I was shocked and I got very nervous because I know, you know, we do these podcasts and things, but I'm not like a public speaker. I get very nervous and anxious a lot. And I went, um, and I slowly realized it was a prank that was being played on me. Because when I said, um, 
the 20 or 25 like dancers and magicians, all that, they all go, um, together in unison. <laughs> and I went, oh, and they went, oh. And then everything I said, they all repeated it. Wow. And I felt like I was back at school. Like everyone, made, you know, <laughs> somehow being made fun of for something. And I went, oh, I see that's happening. And they go, oh, I see that's happening. And they're all copying how I talk. And eventually, the only way to get out of it, I had to, I just went, we're going to have the best gig of our life. And then they'd copy that. And I really, that's how you have to sort of do that. And they all copy it. And oh, eventually, I see. Yeah. And so it, maybe it wasn't a prank. Maybe that's the thing that they do at that moment just before going on stage. And you just didn't realize it. Well, there was a lot of laughter and I was naked. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you wake up screaming? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, well, then I was like, okay. And then I'm just bright red. And then you look and suddenly they've all gone and you open these doors and you've because we'd been at the back yeah. I didn't appreciate over there there's a huge stage with thousands thousands of people and you open and suddenly he's Robbie Williams and he's on stage and there's like let me entertain you's going and he's sort of doing all the face and people are crying in the front rows and right just like he's the funny I mean I, I, I really do like Rob he's so kind and generous and I think I said this you said this to him like I said this to you and you said it to him that you know, whenever I'm with him just amazing things happen. Yes. <laughs> and that's so great. You know, that's so great. Um, but he told me, I, I hope he, I don't know, I hope he won't mind. He told me this story once mm. that just, I had me crying with laughter. It was so, will I tell it to you? What? The story. Did that he which told one? Me, I haven't said it yet. Yeah, tell it, please. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, uh, um, he was playing two nights in Manchester. And on, after the first night, he said to his mother, whose mother was there, and he said to her, did you enjoy the show? And she said, oh yeah, I loved it. But I, I was up dancing and the person behind me asked me to sit down. And that, that was a bit annoying. So Rob said like the next night on, in Manchester, he um, remembered like he's singing a song and he remembered his mother saying that. So he said, um, <laughs> he said, I want everyone in the audience to get up, like, you know, get up and dance. Uh, and he said, everyone, you know, 50,000 people, they all got up, except for the people in the VIP area. They all stayed sitting down. And he said, get, come on, get up, come on, get up. <laughs> and he said, they still didn't get up. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> he said, at the corner of his eye, he saw his manager in the wings going, <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Oh, no. Just for people listening on the audio, John, John is my, well, I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm miming his manager frantically waving, stop. <laughs> They're in wheelchairs. They're in wheelchairs. Oh my God. Yeah. The, the great, you're right that he's such a nice, he's a nice guy though. And, and you know what? There's so much about, um, uh, there are a lot of celebrities who I think put their charity work and stuff out in the public and he wouldn't want me to repeat a lot but there's so many things I heard just through other people about things, nice things he's done for people uh, and, that, and, and they're not publicised they're not known about and it's just someone who's a really really nice oh my God. guy first time I met him very first time I met him um, he invited me to go and see him on Later with Jules Holland Oh, and I had a little bit of a cold and I had a really bad sore throat and I mentioned to him that I've got a sore throat and he went off and unbeknownst to me, he spent like the next 10 minutes trying to find some some lockets, like some lozenges for me. And came back with some lozenges. I mean, how about that? Yeah, the very famous are well brought up sometimes. Um, the other time, actually, the other incredibly nice, similarly nice, goes out their way to help you celebrity is is because uh, I, I wrote the book, The Many Stare at Goats, that got turned into a film with George Clooney. and. George Clooney similarly would like go just very quietly go out of his way to do nice things. Those, those Isn't are, that nice? Yeah, yeah. him and Rob are the two. We should get them together. Yeah. Mate, yeah. And Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal. We were talking last time about how to pronounce his name. Yeah. He was also delightful. Didn't he sort of try to prank you about how his name was pronounced? No, not me. Oh, some, I don't know. Not we were trying me. to put, someone was saying it was like Gyllenhaal and then it was that Jake was winding them up. Right. Like, oh yeah, it's Gyllenhaal or something, like, <laughs> obviously not real thing. Yeah, no, that wasn't me. 